Hello, and welcome to the 35th episode of Tissues of the Day, our comedy show about queer culture and relationships. Today's episode is about pride, and we are about to get into it. I am your host, David, and I'm joined today by my mm, nearly diabetic co-host. <laughs> Help me. My name's Robert, and I have too much insulin, or too little. I can't remember which is the case. Too little, too much. Uh, something like that. Robert and I joke when we talk about our relationships that we're giving each other diabetes because our relationships are very cute and sweet. Yeah, especially uh, David and Gilby. Yeah, they, they he actually has a nickname for him. Mm -hmm. Gilby, but wait, aren't you also a mashup of the two names? Uh, aren't you also like... Oh, are we? I think you were coming up with that. You're like, how about Daybert or Gilvid or something? Gilvid. Gilvid. You sound like some sort of like Romanian warlord. Gilvid. <laughs> yeah. 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 The every land was conquered by Gilvid. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, love it. Um, so as we get started, remember there's video of this podcast on the BitButton YouTube channel and audio wherever you get podcasts. And I would also like to uh, send a personal thank you to Elias and Vicky for being our loyal, steadfast Patreon <sighs> supporters um, for over a year now. Um, wow. I take it as, you know, just quiet support of the work that I've been doing, but it really has helped support this podcast. So on that ever them, so page. wonderful channel called Bit and Button that everyone should yeah, join. Yeah, I really want to put more stuff on there. So TBD with like those projects. But if you want to join the Patreon, patreon.com slash bit button. So Robert, mm. we're going to do our themed discussion. We're going to catch up. We're going to talk about some news and then we're going to do some improv. It's going to be a blast. Are you ready? It's going to be amazing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Remind us of that theme, David. It might be semi related to our show, which which when going through our archive found out we had never literally covered this topic. We've never covered it. I said off mic. I was <laughs> like, OK, but is being gay enough? <laughs> <laughs> we covered a lot of queer topics, but we just yeah. didn't decide to pick that specific yeah. word as a topic. <clears throat> yeah, we didn't. Um, I'm going to sneeze, possibly. <laughs> Today's episode is about pride. So uh, <laughs> This is a reminder that David is allergic to pride. <laughs> I'm allergic to pride. Um, it is related to religion. <laughs> um, oh, no. <laughs> you can check out the religion episode to yeah. find out more of oh, why God, that is. Yeah. That's a deep well, one in which he was <sighs> baptized. Uh, baptized both somehow too early and too late. <laughs> Did I talk about possible? that? Do you remember? Uh, no, I do not remember the too early, too late scenario. So I think I was 19 when I was baptized. It was in 2012. And um, yeah, like it was kind of like a recommitment to faith because um, in 2012 I like fell in love with this straight guy and he was Christian and I was like ooh um it may be uh God wants me clean and so I was like I'm gonna no. get baptized again um yeah. it was like and renewing so it was like, your vows it was yeah I was renewing my vow to Jesus's dick uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's the only lover for me um because like Mm. Yeah. So wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's not how I thought of it at the time. No, I just felt very like I just felt so strongly that God was telling me to get baptized and to um be celibate. So yeah, it was so fucked up. I was like talking to this straight guy that I had a crush on. I was like, hmm, uh, I'm not mm, masturbating to gay stuff anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like sweating and horny. <laughs> like if it was anything, so bad. You were probably masturbating more because now it was like <laughs> extremely taboo. You're like yeah, now yeah. I can't touch him and I've been baptized God, twice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and it was long distance. We had a time difference. It was this whole thing. I think I talk about it in the summer camp episode as well. Yeah. Um, did you ever get baptized? Were you Protestant or Catholic? You know what? I don't know. I was just generic Christian, but yeah. I, like I was baptized. Um, and I remember having a short conversation with my parents about this. Um, how, how old were you? I was like a kid. Like it was like, okay. you know, I was swaddled in, in cotton rags and, you know, water oh, was dripped okay. over my head kind of young. Okay. So you were um, not thinking about Jesus. No, dick. I had no idea. <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe the pastors, but uh, yeah, you know, yeah, it didn't I, do anything for you as a kid. I'm just standing there <laughs> all ripped. 
<laughs> ripped and twinkie. Wait, is this Ottery my pastor Jesus? or Jesus? Oh, it's yeah. Jesus up on the wall. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be really mm-hmm. weird if my pastor also looked like Jesus. I'd be like, wow, there's two hot guys in this building. <laughs> um, <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, I was, and I asked my parents why, and they just said, because it was kind of oblig- obligatory. They felt like they had to do it because uh, their parents were religious, but we stopped going to church, like, even before I hit the double digits, so I, I I missed most of those years. Okay, fair. Was it a parent decision, or, like, did the kids also, were they dragging their feet? They're like, why? I think, yeah, we were kind of generic kids in the sense that we didn't want to go and it wasn't very exciting and I'd rather be at home watching like Sunday morning cartoons you know so I didn't want to be there but my parents would take us but then eventually I think it was more like my parents obviously my parent like the kids didn't care but they didn't my parents didn't care the kids didn't care they were like you're gonna go like you know if they felt like it was important for us we would go religion or not um and then it was just their decision because they started disagreeing with what the church was talking about that they stopped going. So I don't think the kids really had any part in the the stop button being hit. Okay, fair. Yeah. So Robert, what does pride mean to you? <laughs> Ooh. You know, you, like you can take the literal version of it and the more abstracted version. And on the literal side, I think it's what the word is. It's just being proud of yourself and being proud of all the facets that make up who you are. You know, pride is often associated to just sexual orientation, but there's so many other elements under that LGBTQ to I S plus many lettered alphabet, right? Uh, under that umbrella are many things. And I think it's just being proud of all of those qualities that make up who you are as a human. Um, you now answer while I think about the more abstracted version. <laughs> yeah. So just as you were talking, I was like, isn't pride one of the seven deadly sins? Um, and it is. Oh. So it, they, they, <laughs> well, that religion talk really triggered you, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, it always will. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, well, they also make it synonymous with vainglory. So, um, mm. if we're thinking about like, whatever, like, uh historical pride and queer pride are kind of like the two ways i'm thinking about it like historical pride is this like vanity thing this um you know just being like boastful or arrogant and stuff and that's more like yeah. the sin right mm-hmm. um and then would, there's to me that's not like historical that's just like human pride versus like yeah. pride in something you know? yeah well yeah exactly i think yeah it's just the two splits that i have where i'm like yeah if if i'm saying someone is very like prideful i'm kind of referring to that i'm not really talking about Mm -hmm. their queerness um and then queer pride yeah for me yeah is much more in line with just like self-love community orientation doing stuff that you like not judging yourself um you know putting pleasure very high (laughs) as far Mm -hmm. as like Mm -hmm. self-care and um yeah just like making that a priority because you know an opposite of pride could be shame or Mm -hmm. like quietness or Mm -hmm. what do you call yeah self-doubt self-judgment all of those things so yeah i don't know it yeah there there can be subtlety there like what does healthy pride look like um and i would argue it's something i've i think i said in the past of like um the difference between like self-love and narcissism is like self-love is making you better at getting along with other people <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then yeah, like yeah. narcissism is not <laughs> like you'll just, you're just be you're worse working worse. at getting uh, along better with yourself as opposed yeah. to others uh, yeah yeah well it's funny so like if i took my abstract version of what pride is so especially if it's queer pride and and the first word that comes up whenever i hear pride and kind of putting that as a question is always community yeah. Uh, it's it's what I think queer pride is about specifically, and I think where a lot of pride for people comes from is attachment to some sort of community. And it's funny because the article I had sent you earlier today was talked about community, specifically in the ballroom culture. And I think that um, pride for me, especially when it comes to queer pride, that month and the origins of pride, which a lot of people don't realize, is actually was a protest. It was yeah. like a uh, 
you know, an aggressive pushback uh, as opposed to the celebration thing. That's what it kind of evolved into um, is where the origin of it. And it was rallied around this sense of community of like we were these people who were gathering and we're not going to be, you know, pushed down and marginalized and harassed anymore. So fuck you. First brick was thrown. And that brings us back to Stonewall. So I think that community was important. And because it was being rattled, eventually it just was done being rattled and pushed back. So community is a big thing of pride for me. Like you can't have a one person riot. I mean, like you can like spiritually, it but sounds like, like a really cool band name. Yeah. One person, <laughs> one riot. person riot. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like a stand up comedy album. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> By um, probably a queer artist. I just yeah. feel like a queer artist <laughs> yeah. would do that. Yeah. 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 Mm, writing that down. Um, we talk about like earlier queer generations. They didn't have the option to like, what's the word? Just like live more flamboyantly. It was either like you live very this coded, um, what do you call uh, repressed experience? And then maybe during protests or maybe during um, riots, <laughs> like mm. you can be yourself, but like to be yourself, you are bringing on some kind of like violent risk because people will judge you or like you get the police mm -hmm. called on you. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas now, yeah, I think it's just like easy to forget that that wasn't always the case. And also mm -hmm. that we still have lots of room to grow in terms of how we like handle. Yeah. Like the whole like trans rights being repealed, like all of that stuff oh, is gosh, still very related yeah. because of, you know, and like we won't get too heavy <laughs> into that subject, but like, where do you land on living out loud and uh, do you really concern yourself with other people's perception of that? Yeah. Um, well, it's interesting. We were kind of talking about how pride is sort of felt in face of oppression, aggression, judgment and that it's it's kind of a weird thing that I don't think necessarily should have to be felt in connection to pride, like pride on its own to just being proud of yourself and loving yourself and confident in who you are. I think it's something that's kind of specific to the queer community of that, like you're doing this in addition to facing against that retaliation, against that anger, the weird looks, the awkwardness, the judgment, the potentially physical, emotional, you know, verbal violence in that. Uh, which is sad. That's a sad part I don't think we want. And it's the reason why pride happens, pride started, and why it continues to be grown and educated on. Um, the living out loud aspect of it, I think it, what it is, is it's it's a bit of that is necessary to build that proud. So when I say that, I mean like, I sometimes find, you know, like I can find myself in the simplest of situations that, uh, you know, a heteronormative couple don't have to do, which is like the classic holding the hands and thinking about it, questioning it, looking at your surroundings, you know, like, am I within good company to be able to do this? And when you do do it, it is a bit of loudness, even if that's a, a like a quiet loudness, that particular action, such as holding hands, kissing's a little heavier being really flamboyant or whatever you are, non-flamboyant, but just being your queer self, whatever version you are, um, that is a version of loudness. And, you know, there's a scale of one to 10 on that loudness scale, but it is you being loud, I think, at that moment to reinforce your pride and be proud of who you are to fight against the potential threat you feel or the literal threat, threat you're feeling in that moment. And it's just kind of sad that we have to go through that, but... I love the line. I don't know if I had heard this or came up with it, but I feel that we, we have to be allowed to be quiet. Does that make sense? Yeah. <clears throat> in the sense that like we are kind of being allowed to start in order to get acceptance and because we had been quiet for so many years, right? The queer community in general and being repressed in that. That's kind of like the version of quiet. Now it's about being allowed to be known so that eventually one day you don't have to be quite loud anymore and you can be like everyone else and there's no judgment in that. It's just kind of weird that you got to start at a 10 to then go down to one. And this is completely separate to obviously like some people like I think identify as the quiet gays. They're not as flamboyant. They're not as much as out there and they're perfectly lovely too. It's just I think pride and the general concept is like being allowed to start. Yeah, it's this question around like what the hell are people scared of right like <laughs> when when it comes to homophobia or misogyny and stuff because i don't really think that there's queer pride without intersectional feminism and 
like a lot of homophobia is kind of rooted in misogyny and like fear or hatred of women um mm-hmm. because and you know i find those things are usually very entwined like if you hate something you might also be quite scared of it um almost <clears> all <throat> the time i don't know if yeah i feel like there's very few times where it's not mixed together yeah. right fear yeah. begats hate right so yeah. it starts with fear when it comes to being loud yeah it's something i personally want to get better at because i think i have spent a lot of my personal life being quiet and like it's created a bit of a um rubber band or like tipping the scale that like i want to balance now where i realize sometimes when i'm in formats like this or when i'm on stage during improv shows um that sometimes i overcorrect and will like talk too much or like have a lot Mm. to say um and that can get in the way of my listening to other queer or marginalized folks and so i want to get better about that and also just like really standing in my voice and being like nope like i my perspective is valid (laughs) my delivery is valid and um if people have a problem with that it's their problem it's it's not exactly mine like for me free speech is about being able to freely disagree so like i can make my point state my case defend myself whatever um and people are free to disagree with it but if they're dismissing it just because of identity or because of they're perceiving me as like you know, oh, he's queer, oh, he's mixed, oh, something else, then that to me is just really not my problem. If someone's Mm -hmm. like, oh, when you said this, it was inaccurate, or oh, this was misrepresentative, I'm very open to that, because then we're just talking about information. But yeah, I think those other things, just that sense of this person is not like me, therefore I don't have to listen to them, that's nonsense. Mm. Oh, <laughs> gosh. Know? Yeah, yeah. No. There's so many different, you know, thousands <laughs> and hundreds of thousands of permutations of people out there. And you're going to constantly come across people who aren't like you for multiple facets of the human condition. So you got to be willing to listen to those different perspectives. Yeah. And this actually brings me a bit into another question you brought of like, when have you felt a moment of pride, either in general or just in queerness in that? Because... I have definitely felt it in connection to a sense of community and seeing people being allowed about who they are. Probably one of my proudest moments was when I did a show called Love Keeps Saving the Day. Um, I this saw was in that show. Yeah. Aw. This was in 2019. I was pretty hot off of doing Rocky Horror Show with some friends and some of the friends that I made through that. Um, I asked them to join me putting on this cabaret where we were just going to do some karaoke to 70s and 80s iconic queer songs um, and have a show that was very loosely about um, spirits and like emotional worlds and also about LSD and like personal awakening and like connection Mm -hmm. to a higher power or whatever you want to call it. And um we did two performances. Both of them, I thought, went really well, um, were well attended. And there was a specific moment where I was thanking the audience just for like showing up. And I said something like, you know, I really appreciate you folks being out here. I um, honestly am just getting chills, like looking at all of you. And mm. then people just like clapped <laughs> like spontaneously. And I like didn't expect that at all. And it was just very sweet and heartwarming. Um Because I think, you know, I want to be cautious about like the performer instinct to just like put all eyes on me and be like, okay, this is like a healthy thing now. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I don't necessarily know if all of those people had like a great time or like got something artistically out of the show. I'm just assuming they were clapping because they were having a good time and it wasn't like, (laughs) yeah, yeah, good for you, David. (laughs) You also turned on that applause sign. That probably helped. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Nobody would have applauded either way. Yeah, because I think that's something I want to be like I try to be mindful of when producing shows now, like I want things to feel like I'm sharing the stage. I'm not just like Mm -hmm. gathering people to be like, this is my thing now, like trying to be very collaborative. Um, But yeah, that particular show I was very proud of artistically, but also I was in a jumpsuit. I was wearing makeup. It was all about queer music. And Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. Like I forget on like my bad days that I did this really 
cool thing. It was <laughs> an amazing like, show when yeah, it felt and it just, collaborative. I remember yeah. you being very proud of that. Yeah, so I kind of wish I recorded it, or if I do something like that again, I will definitely record it because, uh, yeah, good vibes. How about you? Yeah, um, yeah. well, I want to say moment. something in connection to that because it's so funny because literally earlier today, I knew this episode was coming up and I was thinking about like the theme of pride and I don't know if it was because of that or not, but the song uh, that popped in my head that I decided to start listening to and I was kind of listening to a bunch of disco kind of preparing myself for this was Sylvester, uh, Love, You Make Me yeah. Feel So Real. And it was an awesome opportunity to kind of, you know, one of those, like I was commuting, sitting, listening to music and had a chance to properly analyze a song where normally you're just kind of like, I love this beat. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I actually was listening properly. And it's interesting because I think that song, um, Sylvester in general, was a very uh, iconic queer musician. I think in the 70s, that's when he got big, but maybe it started in the 60s. I'm not too sure. But was just like a big figure. And... Sylvester got uh when you listen to that song like the idea of like you make me feel so real I think that's a really big concept of being your authentic self being true to who you are and I think probably in connection to a show like yours where you had a chance to be yourself and wear makeup and wear jumpsuits and play and listen and sing the songs that you are familiar with it was an opportunity for you to be real and it's not to say that is you and that is only you, but it's a facet of you. And it's a chance to explore that and play with that. And so I think I think that song is a really beautiful testament to the idea that like people love themselves the most when they're being the most real. And when they have somebody who makes them feel real. Days of joy. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That was a really um that was a very intentional theme, <laughs> so I'm glad it came across because the opening song was Cheryl Lynn's. Um, uh, it's also called To Be Real. There's this um, contrast between belonging and fitting in. So belonging is that kind of genuine, I'm authentic, these are my people, they are good to me, I'm good to them. And then there's fitting in, which is that I have to change myself to make this shit work, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. which is like, you know, that's when we talk about living in shame or living with people who don't really support us or they just support parts of us. Um, and then you feel very like internal conflict, like you have to be separated um, and all that stuff. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, pride for you. I'm very curious. My, OK, so my my pride moment. <clears throat> Uh, so the question is in queerness or in general, there's many moments in general, and I'm not going to answer that one because I'm like, mm -hmm. I've felt proud of work, proud yeah. of like accomplishing things, proud of many things. But in the queerness space, um, a huge element of pride for me, again, has been connected to performance and it was performed with queer pride, queer pride, queer prof, uh, because I was doing a lot of improv, especially at a particular point in my life where I was really, really deep in it. And the piece that made me the feel the most full, so to say, that filled my cup, that made me feel a sense of pride was doing stuff with Queer Prop because we, I had a bunch of people who were being themselves, performing, having an audience and having a chance to express themselves artistically because it wasn't just like the general improv we were doing. We were doing specific shows, stylized shows, different kinds of hosts, different formats. I loved the um, musical shows I produced. I loved the... Um, the uh oh gosh i'm forgetting it now um quiz show the the quiz show yeah and then um daft work which was like a like yeah. you know cheesy tech euro techno band that we created and obviously it's the pride in producing something and doing it in a queer format but it was also just seeing people dress up in different ways perform different characters and be themselves and play with us that idea of identity which i think is one of the beautiful things of improv and in particular queer improv where people were able to really play with that spectrum um so that all comes back to a sense of community being connected to that community of queer prov and the things that we produced and i've felt that also in moments of being connected to the queer community when i go to a bar when i see a piece on tv when i see like a solo artist or group you know performers drag queens and that just doing cool artistic things that specifically are about them just being real 
being full of pride and loving themselves and playing with who they are. And that might stay for the rest of their life. That might stay for a year or that might change in a year. But just seeing them enjoying that and celebrating love, because that's one of the weird things I kind of think about in the pride queer community is just like, why is it that we have to put effort into fighting for love? You know, there's there's other things in this world that are literally like causing harm, are sometimes are human cause sometimes not like you know impact from the environment you know like um change in, in global warming in that and and poverty and drought and that i'm like those things are causing harm the queer community is just about love and why do we have to fight for that but it's so lovely to see when it's being expressed because then i'm seeing like people who just get to play with the identity that is human and I feel so much pride in that. I'm just like, I don't want just the queer community to experience that. I want the heteronormative, like just the whole world to be able to play with themselves and not feel judgment, just feel pride in performing the human existence. I feel you. So um, are there habits that you have or things that you do now that help you cultivate pride and like fight back shame? Mm -hmm. I, I think it is those hand-holding moments and that it's something that I brought up with my current partner and past partners that I was like if you will not support me in queer sort of like affirmation moments uh, and it, we're not going to do it all the time like I still have my time where I'm like I just don't want judgy eyes or I'm like I'm not sure if it's safe but for the most part if you're not going to join me in holding my hand showing me that you love me PDAs um, going to queer uh, either rallies or pride parades or like educational events, but just sort of supporting me in my, you know, loud moments, be them a one or a 10, then, you know, oh, I, 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 like it's kind of a deal breaker for me. But um, those are the things that I do to cultivate my pride. It's just kind of like affirming myself and who I am and, and the fact that it can continue to change. You know, I'm one person today and I was a different person 10 years ago, but that's how I try to do it is just kind of lean into those moments and feel pride in them, feel okay with them and continue to play with them as they come up. What about you? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very similar to the things that you're talking about. Like I want um, both partners and friends who are like happy to discuss queer issues, happy to discuss sex openly, happy to discuss, um, you know, just like activist things they might be doing. Or if they're creative, like are is their queerness infusing their art in some way, either mm. through an um, overt theme or just a very hidden theme? Because I also believe like if I'm creating something, even if it's not overtly featuring queer characters or um, explicit sexuality or something, um, it still is queer media in a sense. Um, mm -hmm. So there's that, but that's like a whole tangent. I, I want to take a second to address the queer introverts because I think they might be listening to this and feeling like, okay, that's great. Like living out loud sounds nice, but like it's terrifying. <laughs> like that mm -hmm. sounds like a negative experience. That doesn't sound like that would actually give me anything. Um, so, uh, I mean, the first things, and we can go back and forth on this, but the first things I want to mention is like that sense of terror about like expressing oneself is not your fault, right? Like <laughs> you are queer and like perhaps if you were straight or had a different identity, you might not feel this sense of fear. Um, so it's much bigger than like just your personality. Like there are so many things that have happened over the course of your life that have given you the message. Um, mm -hmm. Don't speak out loud. Don't be too obvious, um, which is really hard. And that's like a very valid experience. That's why this is like a brain teaser, because like for us to keep like fighting this fight to keep like living out loud. Mm -hmm. um, we do need people quote unquote behind the scenes. We do need people who are like more of the organizers or more of the researchers or more just the people who watch the shows or the people who read the books. Like it's, it's okay to be aware of this extroverted living out loud type of activist and mm -hmm. still support them without feeling like you're, uh, putting like a target on your back um 
or mm-hmm. still feeling like you're part of a group uh, and being like, yeah, well, I don't need to be on the stage. That's awful for me. <laughs> but like, I really want to um, be in this space. I really believe in this work. Uh, do you have yeah. any thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I this um, I heard it uh, for the first time years and years ago. Um, a friend of mine, actually from Queer Prov, who referred to themselves as a quiet gay. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, I'm like, that makes perfect sense. And I, I think I referenced it a little earlier on because it's true. Uh, there is, you know, extroverted, introverted, ambivert people and your loudness um first and foremost can be on a spectrum like we've learned (laughs) lovingly from the queer community there's so many things on a spectrum you know loudness can be part of that too you know like to i think there's the idea of kind of like to be loud it's almost like in terms of like how you demonstrate how you know your behaviors and how you present can be loud um or really quiet but also can just come down to your behaviors and like i think you can be loud or part of sort of supportive accepting of being part of the queer community in a lot of other ways that isn't necessarily going to a pride parade slapping on a rainbow and and shouting and, and dancing and hollering it can also be supporting a community endeavor putting money towards something just coming out to a friend or your family you know being proud of who you are researching studying something um, reading an article on it, like those, all those behaviors, I think can also contribute to your own sense of pride, your own sense of self-worth and love. And you don't necessarily have to be on the other end of the spectrum. Like it, it's what is right for you. Um, because I think also like the idea of like living out loud can be once again, in times of the behaviors that you do and how you present, or can also be in other things too. It doesn't necessarily always have to be like associated to this, like very extroverted, loud, you know, colorful behaviorally personality like you don't have to necessarily do that i think one of the things that comes with it is one it's it's kind of wrapped up in what the queer community is but i think it's also part of um minority groups gaining acceptance you kind of need to start being loud regardless if you're queer so let's give it to the like women right women had to march in the streets and shout and have banners and be loud to say like we deserve the right to vote people of color you know, there's there's many minority groups throughout history who had to kind of stand up and shout. So I think the queer community is just another one in the mix. Um, but it's, you know, you can totally cultivate your own sense of pride in many different ways. Do what's right for you. Yeah. Be a quiet gay or be a loud gay, whatever is right for you. That's the thing is like, I don't want to let introverts off the hook necessarily because we do need everybody. We really do need everybody. Um, like it takes all kinds to organize. It takes all kinds to um, whether it's put on shows or try to put together legislation to try to raise funding for things. Um, and introverts tend to have really great like organizational skills, communication skills. Mm-hmm. It's just a matter of overwhelm and like public facing that can be yeah. really hard. Um yeah, I feel like so, that's what the, for people in the arts community. I always feel like they're like this rare, wonderful breed, like a non flaky organized artist. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> but they're out there, they exist. Yeah. And they often, I think, probably end up in roles of being management, administration, supporters, legislators, and that, you know, to support the arts. Uh, and then there's the ones who are up and on the stage and being, you know, big hams. Uh, yeah. But yeah, those those are also important for sure if you are introverted and you're feeling kind of called out right now, um, it's like I said before, it's really not your fault. If you feel like you just don't really want to put yourself out there in that like big bombastic way, but also feel free to do some reflecting like, okay, how much of this is shame and how much of this is my personality? Where can I push? Where does it feel safe to push? Um, and where will I need some more time? Um, Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, like we we do need you and we accept you. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> um, so affirming and loving. Yeah. I'm going to close with an article that Robert shared with me earlier that's largely about pride and about handling this kind of stuff from Medical News Today. The article is called Queer Home Place and Midnight Wisdom, How Ball Culture Helps Heal Toxic Stress. Um, So we don't have time to get into the whole thing today, but I really love the way it closes. It goes, 
Dr. Bailey says that ballroom culture is a minoritarian social sphere where performance, queer genders and sexualities, and kinship coalesce to create an alternative world. And then they close that quote. And then the author of the article goes, that is the world we need. One where we are humans first, where fundamental needs are met, where we are honest about desire, where we understand that our fates and futures are intertwined, where family and identity and creativity are unbounded, where there is music and movement and joy, where we can be free. Mm -hmm. I love it. It, it. Honestly, everybody out there, read the article. It's so beautifully written. You actually like learn not only about queer community stuff and the healing nature of that, but also about kind of like this whole concept of allostasis, I think it's how you pronounce it, mm -hmm. and just learning about the medical reasoning behind it and how it, stress can contribute to this and how having a sense of community and and self-love can help balance that out. And this, I think it's really cool that they said that this is the world's need. It's not just queer community. Like the world needs this. Like we all need that sense of being human first and loving ourselves. And the queer community is just a wonderful example of it, of ones trying to fight for that. And, and everyone should take that on. The amount of like men and women in straight relationships who are like, I just don't understand my partner. <laughs> Where I'm just like, you know, they're actually not that different from you. Yeah. Um, yeah. But there's like so much baggage that you've both accumulated about what your gender roles are that you're finding it really hard to actually bond emotionally and support each other in like a you know proper but like in in a fundamental human way like yeah, yeah i really agree that yeah just just person first person men first, are from mars first. women are from venus bullshit we're all from it's earth Thank garbage <laughs> it's garbage we're all from earth we all have emotional reality i recently read um will to change by bell hooks it's also very much about this stuff of just like interconnectedness you know seeing each other's humanity and letting go of like competition and like mm -hmm. you know hierarchies as ways of relating to each other um and it's uh it's deep work so anyway deep wow work. This was our this was our epic themed chat. Um, I asked Robert if we could do this off the top, and we did a little bit of catch up uh, as we were going through this. But um, now we're just gonna chat as friends. Robert, how are you? How have you been? <laughs> I've been good. Yeah, no, I've been very good. Um, yeah, I mean, let's see. The last time from our audience's perspective that we did this would have been twenty twenty two end of the year. Mm mm. No? 21 or oh, 21 sorry 21 yeah. so end of the year 2021 so that would encompass this year and all of last year right in terms of catch-up mm -hmm. time span so obviously at some point during that um the that season of 2021 i had moved to the uk so i am here and pretty much well established now and really enjoying myself enjoying uh my life in the old world i have a partner who is lovely and did you call uh, it the old world do people call london the old world well europe europe oh, okay. old world versus Got new it. world yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> whereas uh, london london is called the old smoke uh that didn't sound mm. british at all but yeah there's <laughs> the a term called smoke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which I think literally just came from the fact that they had thousands and thousands of chimneys that were all burning coal and wood, and so it was smoky as hell and very polluted. Uh, thank goodness I didn't enter during that period. Um, so, yeah, I've just been, like, loving discovering this city uh, and the UK in general, but also Europe, like, just the access to it. Obviously, my partner, who I mentioned, who is lovely, and we've been developing a relationship. We're kind of doing a semi-long distance thing, but long distance, like, in the UK has a very different connotation than it does in Canada or North America. Like, it's not like another province over, another state over, where it's like a flight. I literally just get on a train for an hour, and I get to see him. So, so that's been good, and, and actually, it's honestly been the best for me, because when I came here, I was like, I needed to be on my own and, and, and learn more about Robert and build my relationship with myself before somebody else. So I've been doing that. I've been getting into improv out here, specifically an acapella improv group, which has been mm. really lovely. Um, I've been diving more uh, into learning and development stuff and actually um, working on 
I guess it's top secret, I shouldn't quite say it, it is, but working with my wonderful colleagues on developing curriculums around creativity and artistry and that, which I'm really enjoying. And uh, yeah, I let's see what's coming up. I've got um, my first hen do, which is basically a stagette in uh, the UK. Oh. So yeah, and me and my partner, the two token gays, we're going to be going to Spain, my first time ever going to Spain, and we're going to do a Ooh. hen do out there. So that will be messy, I'm sure. And we're coming into spring, and I love spring. Um, not my favorite season, that's fall, but there's this tree outside my place that blossoms in spring with these white buds, and it just gets so full. And it's like, I get to have that like princess moment where I open up my like curtains in the morning, and I'm like, ah, and it's just like all these beautiful flowers on this tree. It's wonderful. Cute. How are you? How has your year been? Here um, in a bit. Crazy. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's been insane uh yeah yeah it's been a lot um first off thank you for sharing all that uh, mm-hmm. i have met martel or i have met robert's partner i'll bleep that if you don't want to say no 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 it's all good okay I, no, no, it's fine. um yeah and i have seen this tree <laughs> not when it was in bloom yeah, it's gonna say you haven't it seen it great bloom, did you? yeah it's, yeah it's great tree. yeah i came by may last year i made a video about it on um my david borja like vlog type channel um maybe i'll put a link to that in the show notes so let's see so my year was nuts i was uh yeah i also got into a relationship um i had to yeah we quit. referenced it earlier what's your mashup name yeah uh, Gil, um, Gil, Gil, <laughs> Gil, 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 davert yeah. um where just a really wild relationship like we were um super into each other he uh was finishing studies so a lot of our time has been spent like balancing his studies with my work schedule which can be a bit intense because like he's doing med so like it's just a lot then i had to david landed himself a doctor (laughs) pretty exciting Mm -hmm. pretty smart i had to stop taking weed gummies because i was getting pretty dependent on them through uh 2021 um just dealing with stress (laughs) dealing with a very Mm -hmm. like intense um couple years yeah intense two years so i was doing that then um so yeah it's like a reset like healthy baseline moment where we can be like okay are we ready (laughs) for like the (laughs) next whatever's gonna come now next level Um, yeah because i think yeah yeah it was just it was just so much like yeah both of us learned a lot like about our communication styles our coping styles our own boundaries our needs in the relationship like all the stuff that robert and i had talked about um for like season one of Tissues of the Day. I was like, oh Thank shit. Thank goodness gotta, we educated ourselves gotta, on it. I gotta live ready. all this now. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, so he and I are in a very good place and like, it's just a super tender, caring relationship. Um, and I'm very thankful. Uh, I'm just thankful every day. Yeah, I started working in film and TV and live action productions, which was also very intense, just like pretty long hours. Um, steep learning curve but it's something I want to keep doing so it's slow season right now and uh, yeah I'm just looking forward to more work soon so what it's been what has it been like since like endemic times have occurred Mm. what is the new world like for you I got COVID um, and you know I was I think double shot or triple shot at that point um, or triple vaccinated whatever i'm not an espresso um (laughs) i don't know you're you're pretty foamy and full of caffeine yeah yeah i talk pretty fast are you sure david (laughs) um yeah it was barely a concern honestly there were like signs in my workplace that were like this is a covid19 safe workplace stay six feet apart wear your masks and nobody did it (laughs) like they were just like over it nobody talked about it it was just kind of like at that point, all of the remote workflow stuff was about people's convenience. It wasn't about health, um, which is great, especially in film, because it's so meeting focused and like, yeah, well, you're not alone, man. That is the business yeah. world is just That's true. meetings yeah. upon meetings. Yeah. I, well, I think there are like some industries where you have to do stuff in person. So like 
the production side where people are on sets, that all has to be in person. And I think they're stricter about COVID protocol. But in post-production and pre-production, they are, yeah, it's so many meetings. It's so much remote work. Um, so I think that's probably for the best, uh, though I know some editors like being in the same room with their directors when they're doing that really like deep work time. Um, but yeah, I think it'll be similar to that stuff. How about you with, uh, yeah, <sighs> post-ish COVID? Post-ish COVID. Um, I know that I got COVID per test results because I was testing myself for a very long period, especially because um, I had left Canada. So I was losing track of how the policies and how people were engaging with it there. But out here, like testing was pretty big. Like if I went, even when kind of lockdown had was done and things were opening up a bit, if I went to any kind of group activity or something where like somebody was organizing it and they were concerned about COVID to some degree, it was always like, hey, we're meeting at this time on this date, make sure everybody do a test and show your results. Like send a picture in that WhatsApp thread, um, you know, so that everyone knows. And it was very thorough and very on top of it. But yeah, like, for example, going back into the office, like I found in very public places, malls, transit, uh, not really outdoor stuff. People weren't worried about that. But, you know, within stores and things like that, enclosed spaces, people were pretty good. But then when he got into the office, it was sort of like, unless there was some policy, and I had a friend of mine who they had every week, the company paid for everyone to be tested. So you'd come in, there's like a testing company who would test everyone. Uh, unless you had that kind of privilege, it was kind of like, uh, like people try to sit further from each other, but eventually you'd walk past each other. You'd be in a meeting room and you would try to get a bigger one, but you're still all sitting there and you might have the odd person who's putting on the mask, but not for the most part, no. Um, I think for me, when I think about this kind of post COVID ish world is that I really, as much as like the world tried and I think, you know, a mixed bag is succeeding at being diligent and listening to medical professionals and their governments and those who have been elected into bodies to tell you how to handle these exceptionally weird times, uh, I think was pretty good and managed well. Uh, I just, it depends on where you live. Yeah, it depends on where you're. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. I should. And people's politics and all of that. Stuff. Yeah. Um, there's always exceptions to the rule, but I just, I would really hope that some of the practices of having hand sanitizer available everywhere, putting on a mask when you think you are sick or you're just concerned about getting sick, say around like winter time, um, I would love to see that remain and people just being more educated and knowledgeable, people washing their hands better and more thoroughly. Uh, you know, just better practices on sanitation, because obviously we're going to need it not only until the next pandemic, but like in between. So I'd like to see more of that. Um, and uh, I would, oh man, trillion dollar idea. Whoever can come up with a rapid testing tool that not only just tests for COVID, but flu, cold. Like if I could get one of those little rapid testers, a box of them, and just pull one out whenever I think I'm getting sick, test myself, find out what I am, and then like make a decision like, oh, it's a cold. I, you know, like, and it's mild. I can go outside. It's COVID. I stay inside. It's a flu. Maybe I should also stay inside. I don't know. But just, I love the ability to test myself and to know what the hell is wrong with me without having to make a doctor's appointment, without going into a clinic because they're overloaded. And I'm just like, man, if somebody could make one of those for every major bug out there. Oh, yeah. Love it. Yeah. It's a really good point. That's our catch up. Um, if you, <laughs> What's our mustard? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll be mustard. You be okay. catch up. I'll be um, relish because I'm chunky. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, yeah, I'll be mayo. Just because. Oh, oh we, we know why you're mayo. Yeah, yeah, I'll be mayo because I'm thick and savory. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you end up on most people's faces. <laughs> so yeah when my end is up it <laughs> anyway um <laughs> yeah he gotta smack the bottom of his bottle <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah yeah so uh we're gonna transition now to our silly news segment it's been a while robert and i have mm. grabbed some articles that just uh really tickled us so the article that i brought is is uh titled to escape jail and go to ihop where patrons report them. 
So this is from Virginia, uh, brought to us by AP News. Two inmates in a Virginia jail use primitively made tools to create a hole in the wall of their cell and escape, only to be found hours later at an IHOP restaurant nearby, a sheriff said. They were two men. They exploited a weakness in the jail's construction design and uses tools made from a toothbrush and a metal object to access rebars behind the walls, then use the rebar to further their escape. After escaping, they scaled the containment wall around the jail. The jail, so they really like, they did yeah. like the classic, the movie classic jail yeah, escape. Yeah, moment. yeah, yeah. Dug a hole with a toothbrush, and I like how they say metal object. I'm assuming it's like a spoon or a fork, but Probably. like, it's it's a little funny how they didn't specify because maybe maybe they really screwed up, and like next to the toothbrushes, somebody left like. An, a prison escape tool. <laughs> yeah. Like, Whoops, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shouldn't have left oh, that shit. in the jail oh, cell. We left the hammer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. wonder if anybody could have used that. Yeah, mm. yeah. I, I just love the specificity of IHOP, and I really wonder if this article was sponsored by IHOP or something. Because, like, okay, is it good <laughs> PR? They sponsored the jail too. Is it good PR or bad PR for IHOP to be mentioned uh. as the place where they found? criminals you know what i think it's a classic like the only thing worse than not than bad press is no press at all and like yeah. in this case it's sort of like think about it these guys were in jail for x number of years thinking about all the things that could have had on the outside and the first thing they go to when they break through that wall those years of digging and scrounging and hiding and you know like on espionage but just like covering it up and they go to ihop that's some good press in my mind yeah yeah like i don't know something about ihop is really sticking out to me because like they could have gone to any nondescript diner yep and i'm wondering if they would be less visible or like if it was less popular like did they go during peak hours because they also like okay that that's my thing is like are they really incompetent or do they like really just love ihop and they're like Mm -hmm. we can't like that's how they bonded in the jail they're like god you know what i miss just sitting, like eating over a horrible jail food or whatever. I really miss IHOP. <laughs> well, and then yeah. somebody's like, dude, me too. You know what? It would be worth it. It would be worth it to escape for IHOP. Well, maybe that's the thing. Maybe they never escaped with the intention of like actually like getting away from the jail. They just, just wanted to get to one IHOP. good meal. <laughs> they wanted one good meal. And then they're like, we're good, fine going back. We just wanted a good IHOP at. You know, now there's something in that article. They specifically say that it's an IHOP restaurant nearby the jail. So that's where like the stupidity kicks in. They were tantalized. Well, and and well, yeah, maybe it was the wafting scent of all these. Like, yeah, you know, every day coming every day and they're they like, smell it. It yeah, yeah, working out in the yard. They're just like, come on, man. How far was this restaurant? They could have gone to a restaurant probably hundreds of miles away. So they wouldn't be caught again and thrown back into the jail that was looking for them. And obviously would start looking at the closest proximity. But if this thing was literally like across the street, <laughs> like if that's the, as yeah. far as they managed to get before their stomach like started yeah, commanding were they them. they in <laughs> their like jumpsuits or their, you know, <laughs> their gear? Because the it's like, come on, man. <laughs> uh, no. What do you call, what, do you, uh, what are prisoner uniforms called? Are they just called uniforms? Uh, I don't know. But if if they yeah. were wearing the big orange jumpsuit coverall, whatever yeah. it is, yeah, 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 that, that just we're not even close stupidity. to Halloween. They're like, uh, oh, hmm, I don't know if those gentlemen should be here. Yeah, imagine the waitress coming to the table and seeing them there. Yeah. Uh, especially if that like restaurant was near a jail yeah. cell. Yeah, they probably would have reported them immediately. They were probably like, "Could I order a you know a four stack of pancakes and my freedom?" Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah literally. <laughs> Oh, how can I help you boys? Any plans today? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. It's like I'm <laughs> trying to get out. Yeah. <laughs> I noticed that your uh, fingernails are really dirty. <laughs> that you've been covered yeah. in dirt. Can Ooh. I uh, use your washroom and your telephone? <laughs> <laughs> is it a is it paid? Is it a free telephone? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Gosh. it's just on the phone for 30 minutes and then the police show up. Damn it. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we were just trying to get our getaway car. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. yeah. That, that's all I got to say. It was mostly the IHOP thing that stood out to me. I was like, Ugh, was it was it worth it for the pancakes? I really hope so. Okay, I'm going to pull up mine. Here's the title to mine. 
this is UK based news because it seems like all my Google results are now UK focused. Mm. But uh, the title's quite long, but it's Strangest Supermarket Online Shopping Substitutions. I'm not actually going to give the example they give, but the whole overall idea is like, and this is interesting because back home in Canada, I never did grocery delivery because I was kind of like counter it. I was like, no, I was like, and I think it's because it was like the beginning of the pandemic and I didn't really like ever consider getting groceries delivered to me so then when i moved it was more of a reality yeah i was just like kind of it just feels kind of privileged or just like i don't want to be i don't want to be a bother (laughs) and i was just a block away from a grocery store i'm like how lazy are you robert so getting here i just got into it and i i don't do it i do it probably once a month i'll get a big order and it's kind of for the heavy stuff i don't want to carry so um you whenever you do this out here I'm sure anywhere you get grocery delivery, you have the option to say, like, of these 10, 20 items I want, you can specify each one is substitutionable, if that's a word, or not. Yeah. So this article covers kind of the weirdest substitutions that people have got. So some of the examples I give is this. Well, first and foremost, before I go into that, um, let's see. So they say almost half of deliveries at some of the major grocery stores, which include things such as Sainsbury's, Tesco, and Aldi will substitute an item in the last 23 months. And some of the weird substitutions include things such as sellotape instead of toilet paper, to strawberries in place of bin bags, which are garbage bags. Uh, There's more. Um, They also found, yes, one Aldi shopper had ordered a bag of onions and instead it was substituted with a loaf of bread. So... (laughs) Okay, so well, when it you keeps say, going, it keeps going. Hold on. Yeah. They received a substitution <laughs> when ordering from Sainsbury, including shoe polish instead of fruit, bacon rather than barbecue flavored crisps. And they had um, somebody who received an Easter egg instead of ordering hot dog rolls. <laughs> and somebody rolled a, roll, ordered a roll of tinfoil, which was swapped out for a chocolate Santa. <laughs> There's foil on those. <laughs> Who was the person making the decision that this is an equivalent to what they ordered? Toilet paper instead of sellotape? Were they taping their ass together? Were they wiping with tape? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So is this on the grocery store or is it on the customer? Like, will the customer say, if you don't have X, sub with Y? Mm -mm. It's on the grocery store. You never have a choice over that. They just try to find the equivalent. So it's always on the grocery store. Oopsie. Yeah. Yeah. Like... (laughs) Come on, freaking strawberries in place of bin bags. Like, well, <laughs> I can't I can't put my garbage anymore into a bin bag. So I'm just going to stuff it inside the strawberry. <laughs> like, what? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, damn. Damn, well, oh, that's so silly. <laughs> receiving dog chews instead of chicken breasts. So it's like, I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Here, chicken, have some, so just, just, gonna eat just some dried, yeah, dried cow ear instead of your chicken. What? Oh, this is weird. Toilet rolls instead of bread rolls. So you're supposed to wipe your ass with a bread roll? <laughs> yeah, I, it's absorbent. <laughs> the, it says customers sure. with special dietary requirements fare particularly badly um, yeah. because vegan and vegetarian products will be swapped out with meat or dairy. Mm-hmm. Dude. Celiac people like yourself, I'm sure there's many scenarios yeah. of that. They're like, oh, they wanted, you know, the gluten-free rolls, so instead I'm going to give them normal rolls. You have the right to reject substitutions at the point of delivery, or you can yeah. opt out of receiving substitutions altogether. If you end up with a sub that you don't want, always contact the supermarket and ask for a refund. Ask yeah. for that refund. Get your refund. Oh, yeah. yeah, because like, you know, my first instinct is these are underpaid supermarket workers <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or yeah, like yeah. we're like uh, fuck this <laughs> and they just like throw whatever yeah yeah it's just it's weird like it's just a really weird choices so the good news is is as they say in their article first and foremost you say whether or not you will allow substitution so you can just kind of turn mm-hmm. it off and never get them and they'll just they'll, they'll be like we're out of stock you're not getting it okay yeah um but I allow substitution for everything. And for the most part, they're pretty logical, but obviously there's some really bizarre choices. And um, the good thing is that when you get it, when you receive it at the door, I literally can just hand back items I don't want to the guy. And I've done this before where I'm like, I don't want A, B, or C because it's just not a good substitution. Or I feel like, God, item like this is expiring tomorrow. I don't want this. And you give it back. And they immediately refund it. Like within minutes, they'll refund it, which is great. Um, so it's not that big a deal, but 
these examples I give in this article, like I would just love to take a picture and be like, is it posted on social media? Be like, really? You wanted to substitute my like toilet paper with crabs, you know? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Like the animal, not the condition. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Literally. I wanted um, some stationery, but you sent me um, uh, (laughs) raw fish. (laughs) Uh, Received an alcohol free bottle of wine in place of a standard one. What if it was the reverse? What if you had somebody who was an alcoholic? And they're like, I, I was ordering alcohol free and you replaced it with alcohol included, you know? Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. where it could get bad. Yeah. And again, like not to be a downer, but I know a lot of people probably do these um, grocery deliveries because they have accessibility needs. And so if they mm-hmm. have this situation where they're not getting the thing, like, do they double up? Do they just order for somebody else? Yeah. Yeah. That's rough. Yeah. Shall we do yeah. some improv? Let's do it so we are gonna do in our final segment a game called cut to where robert and i will be two characters in scenes and we may reference something related or unrelated and cut to it as these characters do we want to do first line last line so like if we're feeling like we're getting to a close okay so you okay here here's what you're gonna do look up improv generator You'll get Lulu's and then I want you to generate the last line. Don't tell me what it is and I'll generate the first line and start with it. And you won't know what it is. So eventually you have to get us to your last line and I will kick us off with the first line. Yeah. And then say scene. Then scene it. Yeah. Like classic scene it. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I'm going to kick us off. Uh, So this is a open cut to scene inspired by Lulu's improv generator and I'll kick us off. What do you think about this? It's 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 rough. It's it's coarse. It's like I I, I, I like can't it, it's like hurting my hands, Steven. I'm not gonna name you Steven. It's hurting my hands, uh Jeffrey. I know. I know. We can't use any of this moisturizer. It's not gonna work well. Who put the the, the, the micro beads in it? I don't know. I just thought it was trendy. I was seeing it in all the other products at Lush. You, and you it's you, Jeffrey. Well, you put the I, microbeads I, in it. I, I'm also leading the marketing here, Carl. You know, mm-hmm. and I'm just looking at everything else on the market, and it's just they've got microbeads. They got scents. They've got little toys inside. It's some of them. I just, I just, I didn't. I like, I lost track, and I'm sorry. I screwed up. Everything's being deployed, Jeffrey. I know, I know. We've got batches and batches of this rough-ass moisturizer. Cut to Jeffrey do? tonight at home. <sighs> what happened, sweetie? I fucked up the moisturizer. D- the They didn't like the microbeads? No, they hated them. And they were Why? not even micro, they're just normal they're beads. Great. They help my warts. Yeah, I know. You're the only person with that many warts, honey. And quite frankly... It's not working for others. The beads are too big. The pump on the bottle has to be exceptionally large for them to come out. And, That's why and I just, like it. I, I know, like a I thick know. pump. I know. We, we all love a thick pump. We all love a big bead. But you the know, problem okay, is hey. the product's not going to sell. Yeah, maybe, maybe under their brand. They're thinking too small, Jeffrey. What are you, are you? Are you insinuating I start my own thing? Yeah. My own brand? Yeah. Cut to 20 years later when he started his own company. <laughs> so, boss, I, I finished our uh, recent ad campaign for uh, Rough Wart Be Gone. Ah, oh, yeah. People are that loving it. Number one, number one product here at Big Pump Bath and Products. I really love that we picked such a catchy name, Big Pump Bath and Products. BP, BP. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, BP, my BP. wife came up with it. She's been my muse since day one. Beautiful lady. Beautiful lady. Uh, mm. The So uh, regarding this ad campaign, I'm wondering if um, uh, I, I'm, I'm wondering if you like the work enough um, that we can yeah, talk about. Yeah, no, let's, this, let's take uh, a look. Lay it out. Lay it out. This, this raise and uh, bonus that I've been talking to you about. <laughs> well, let's not jump ahead of the gun there, Jerry. We've got to make sure that this campaign's going to, you know, pass Q&A, right? So uh, let's see what it's looking like. Okay. We've got, so, we've got the big pumps on the bottle. I'm liking that. Yeah. Yeah. So we got, we're 
you know, of course, the BPBP thick spout uh, special is in that in that opening design. Um, and for this one, we were thinking uh, a new line of scents. Um, mm-hmm. We were going mm-hmm. more of a natural route. We were thinking pine, sandalwood, and um, hibiscus. You know, something oh, sweet, something Jerry, sharp, and Jerry, something Jerry, 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 stop right there. Everyone's doing those scents. We want to go to the origins. We want to go to the roots. I don't want just the plant that's generated. I want the source of what's grown. I want seed smells. I want dirt smells. I want ocean smells. We're oh. going to have to bring that back to R&D and come up with new ideas. Cut to R&D, developing new scents. Well... Yeah, so ready? yeah, so we're thinking of putting um real dirt, real seeds, real leaves into the product, sir. Uh I, I <clears throat> I'm I'm a little concerned as the uh as the head scent generator, uh scent scientist, so to say. Um I feel like your recommendations are going a little uh, awry. We 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 normally go the botanical route, we normally go for uh florals you know, petals, uh, sometimes we get extracts, but to go to dirt and seeds, is, is this what you're recommending, Jerry? Wait, does Jerry do the ads? Jerry does the ads. Jeffrey's and- the CEO, <laughs> Jerry does the ads? <laughs> yes. And he was recommending the scents. J- right. I was Jerry. I'm still Jerry. You're still Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> I... Good to not this. <laughs> <laughs> so, I had the best bath yesterday. I don't know about you. Did you enjoy it? You know, I uh, I smelled it. I smelled during it during the bath. The yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You you like? Did you like the scent? I mean, I just. I honestly, I thought the tap broke. Um, it. It smelled like you had an accident. It smelled like something was wrong with the pipes. Wait, but you seem really happy. What What is an accident smell like? What, what went wrong? I mean, like, I had like, a luxurious it bath. Like, it was rusty. It, it just smelled dirty. It smelled musty. Oh yeah, that's the newest scent that they just brought back. But it was by BPBP. Hmm. Aren't they like it's... a multi level marketing corporation? I mean, I had to buy a thousand dollars worth of the products to sell to other people, but I thought I'd test it out first. <laughs> Marissa, what? You, you're late on rent, Marissa. I know, but I'll make it back when I sell these products off. You know, like <laughs> I took out a credit line. I'll be fine. You, yeah, but you took out a credit line for the products, but not for rent, Marissa. We we oh, talked just, about wait, this. Wait, wait. You just, just you, you'll believe me when you smell it yourself. Try this one. Try this extra big pump one. It smells like lichen. It smells like li- exactly like lichen. Because it, it's lichen. It's just a bottle full of lichen off of a rock. Isn't it like BPPP is so weird? Oh, you haven't even started to try some of the weird shit. Wait until we get you to smell the um, bottle full of rusted nails. Oh, is that I used it in my bath last night. Oh, yeah. 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 I have never been better exfoliated, you know? Okay. Okay. Well, Marissa, like... You did sign an agreement saying that you would pay rent on time. So at this point, I don't know if this roommate thing is working out. Do you, Do you have think your landlord you will accept lichen? Let's ask him. Cut to that. Cut to the landlord. All right, I'm here to click rent. Hear us out. We don't have money, but mm-hmm. we have a thousand bottles of various naturally scented BPBP products. Are you interested? Hold up, hold up, wait. Bart, was it? Bart? Yeah. Bart, you're telling me you're gonna pay your rent in cents. Mm hmm. Instead of dollars. You don't have any cash. Mm hmm. Where the hell's Marissa? Why isn't she in here? Sorry, sorry, I'm late. I'm late. I mean, I just, yeah, I was just yeah, caught Marissa's up in the bath here. again. <laughs> she, you were taking a bath before our meeting? I love baths with these new products. I'm so sorry. It's it's fine. Mr. Um, Desbatakis, like, please, I want you to try one of these products. Yeah, so wait, Marissa, do you have, uh, is the water still in the tub? 
<laughs> yeah, it's it's still full. Partly with scents, partly with my blood, and partly water. <laughs> why, why, Marissa, why is your yeah. blood in the tub? It's their newest scent. They just came out with it yesterday. I had to buy 500 bottles. Wait, you put your own blood in the, does it say no, like. No, 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 it's their blood. I bought the bottles. <laughs> okay. It's their newest right. scent. Uh, Mr. Demsitukakis, um, if Dems you could Batakis. just. I'm sorry. I do that all the time. Um. Mr. Desbatakis, could you come down and just try out this tub and just see if you like the product? Oh, God. You know what? I installed that tub in 1972. If that thing's damaged, for the love of God, I will. I, up to high heaven, I will be. Let's see the tub. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. So, Mr. Okay. Desbatakis, just like walk through here. It's over on your right. So, you're going to want to step foot first just, just drop, dip in your toes you know like try it out yeah fully Feel clothed the... mr desbatakis yeah you know you want to have the natural scent of your own body and socks blending with the natural scents it's part of their line from bpbp <clears throat> so just yeah dip in your toes or I, I, should i leave my shoes on should i take them off yeah it's fine yeah just you know if anything goes with the bpbp stuff it'll seep right through Ugh. You know what? I'm kind of enjoying this. I have some horrible warts on my feet. <gasps> you do? Yeah. I've, I've been struggling with these for years. I can already feel it easing up. That's... Oh, that's great. Um, can, can I help you with those? What are you saying? We have a pumice stone. Can I Can I rub them for you? Get the seed out? Oh, okay. I've never done this before. Uh, I'll That's just okay. sit here and observe. I'm going to start putting off some aromatherapy scents to add to the moon. Good idea, Marissa. Okay. All right. Mr. Uh, De De God. Desbatakis. Des Desbatakis. All right. Uh, I'm just going to take the shoe off, take the sock off. Oh, be gentle with them there. Rather tender. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Mr. Desbatakis, these are... Whew, these are pretty uh, rough. Yeah, it's uh, it's just I'm sorry, I'm getting a little teary eyed. I haven't been it's okay. touched can this you, way in a long time. Can you just hold the pumice stone for a second? Sure. It's rather okay. large. Yeah. Do you also uh, get this from BBBB? No, actually, this is from their uh rival. Um uh, oh boy. Uh, <laughs> uh scratchy sticky rocks incorporated. <laughs> SSRI. <laughs> SSRI. <laughs> wow, you guys, you know how to live a life. Yeah. You know what? I was questioning whether or not I could actually go without rent, but quite frankly, this this house isn't even an income generator for me. I just it was oh. left to me in, in 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 a in a will, and I, it was just convenience. It was just extra income. But this, 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 these I have never seen my warts been worked like this in years. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so just uh, keep working it with the uh, pumice stone, um, and you'll get some of that extra skin off. <laughs> this might sound a little out of place, but do you do you do you have any plans for dinner later tonight? Don't push it like that. You'll you'll break it. <laughs> Scene. <laughs> <laughs> Like You'll break it. Are you talking about their relationship? <laughs> I guess so. Wait, was that the final line? Yeah, that was scene. Oh, okay. that was the last Amazing. line. Okay, right. That's true. That was the final line. Yay, we got to the line. Ooh, I was like, okay, how do I get it to this? Because at first it gave me the same line. Because you started with, um, what do you think about it or something? Yeah, what do you think about this? Yeah, what do you think about this? Is it gave me the same one? So so much for random generation sounds yeah. sequential to me. <laughs> yeah, because okay, Lil. if you click if you click lines again, does it say don't push it like that? Uh, let me try. Hold on. It... No, who? I don't get it. Did they mention cool. that you look great? Yeah, so it is random. Great. Woo. Woo. Wow, epic, epic. Right. Uh, BP BP. BBB. I was thinking about the BP oil spill the whole time. I was trying. I totally to thought you were gonna do like try to do the antithesis, like 
A C A C or something. Yeah, I know. I was like, uh, how do I think about what would be the opposite of yeah, because I was like bulky let's... porous. I already forgot what it was called. Just big pumps, big pumps, big bulky pumps. Pss, powders. I don't know. <laughs> big pump, bulky powders. Uh, that I believe is the end of our show. Mm, <laughs> Thanks for listening to Tissues of the Day. You can follow me, David, at BitButton on Twitter and Instagram. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can follow Robert at Robert F. Mackay on Instagram. That's true. If you loved the show, you can donate at patreon.com slash BitButton. Otherwise, tell a friend. Feel free to follow us wherever. And uh, stay wet, internet. Yeah. Do yeah. it. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> that, that was Jerry, the marketing guy. No, no, that was the scientist. The scientist, yeah. yeah. Stay wet and smelly. Yeah. Fragrant. <laughs> Fragrant.